life. How they do and what kind of uh, tactics they're using, so it's gonna be great. Yeah, it's a uh, big day of the finals of the Champions Cup ahead. We've got four matches over the next four hours, and of course, we are doing this over Twitch, seeing as we're not live on site. So bear with us if there are any kind of technical difficulties. If everything goes perfectly on the plan today, you can thank Javi, who's working behind the scenes. If things go badly, you can blame us probably just for the most. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a bit of an experiment, a bit of a wild ride, I'm pretty sure, over the next few hours, but uh, bear with us. And we're going to start with the Women's Bronze Medal in each of the last few seconds when it's starting at half past one Pacific European time. And we've got the Minka Turbo from Germany against Loki Ken Saint Andre from Hungary. So, starting with the women, Dida, what do you reckon? I think it's going to be a great game, I hope so. Uh, we have a lot of uh, top scores in the teams and it's going to be fun to see how they evolve and uh, how they use their strong shooting uh, style. So yeah, I think it's going to be great. national team players uh, from the Euro playing in that one. And uh, for, for Minga Turtles, some players that those of you who have been either following this weekend or watched the European Championship a few months ago would recognize, uh, in particular, Emilia Molman, uh, number 18, and uh, Lena Kringler, both really good attacking players to them. Lucy Marie Kretschmar, who's uh, a big name anyway with her father and making her own way in the handball world in the last few years. So a, a lot of talented players there, and they were really, I think, upset yesterday after losing the semi-final against Lesa in both sets, losing by a single point, 23-22 and 19-18. So really difficult for them to have to bounce back today and uh, find a way to win this bronze medal. Yeah, it is like, a, for a player, it is a very big, um, it's, it's very difficult to, you first have to like get over the fact that you didn't get through to the final and then you have to like sort of come on top and focus on the new match. It is very difficult, but they play so many games in the beach handball every day. So it's, it's, a, it's a topic in the, through, through the Champions Cup and through every beach tournament to get over it talk it out and then uh, go through to the next one and uh, focus on the next game. That's a very interesting aspect, I 
think for beach handball in these championships you experienced a couple of years ago in Poland for the European Championship that you won a gold in so didn't have to deal with a disappointment like this in the final day but I'm really interested in your approach to you know having to play two or three games every day during a championship and then towards the end having basically 24 hours of nothing and having to get yourself somehow to 100 percent just for 20 minutes of beach handball it's a really tricky yeah. aspect of the game it is really tricky and i've been a part of the youth national team indoor which is a completely different thing with indoor handball where you get a lot of time between the matches so in beach handball it really was uh it was really difficult to uh, settle into or adapt to that you couldn't just hang on to the fact that you lost or hang on to the fact also that you won and be on top of it because you you have a game like a couple of hours away so it is um, it is a topic and it is something that you speak about on the teams and you speak with the coach about or in preparation for the tournament. It is something uh, that is uh, focused on because you have to be able to get through it and focus on a new game. And uh, we could see already as two teams are lining up that the uh, Hungarians, and I noticed this a lot also during the European Championship, they have a a very dynamic approach to their warm-up and you can see them dancing along in the sideline as well uh really pumped up for this one and i it's i guess it's a different kind of approach as well warming up and getting ready for a game like this on the sand yeah um because in beach handball is also a little bit a little bit about the vibe there's good music great atmosphere so i think many of the the athletes athletes uh, like myself we we kind of thrive on the atmosphere too and and the i mean like uh, the vibe and the good music so it's a nice way of like getting focused but also like enjoying this and uh, enjoying the the, the, the warm-up and the music and the vibe yeah now we're just about to get uh, ready to start here and it's going to be uh, the Minga Turtles in the uh, light blue tops and it's going to be Sentendre from Hungary in the yellow tops. We'll also talk about the specialists and goalkeepers as well in a moment for those of you who are not so familiar with the sport. But I'm guessing most of you tuning in here on Twitch for the final day of the Champions Cup are big beach handball fans, but we'll try and uh, make it all inclusive as the day goes on. So, you know, if you're not too sure about some of the rules and uh, want to learn a bit more about it, actually get involved on the comments as well here on Twitch and we'll try to uh, help you through as we go. But third time lucky, finally we get the tip off underway. And uh, you as a goalkeeper did it. You, uh, I guess, have a lot of focus on what the defense is doing as well. And you said you were looking forward to seeing how the defenses look and talk us through what you're seeing here from the German side in defense at the start. Um, yeah, right now I'm still watching the... I think I'm not live. Give me a second here. Oh, you're still behind. <laughs> yeah, I'm behind. Okay, so the Germans have the ball now, I see. Yes, so now you're good... back up to date. There you go. I am. Thank you. So yeah, it is the, the German yeah. side attacking from left to right here, and that was their first shot uh, save. Yeah, trying with... Oh. The ball needs to be a little bit higher and closer to the player in order to do that. Going for it. Oh, what a nice goal. Yeah, it was a nice breakthrough there. And the first two points of the first set to St. Andre. Uh, but the German side and, you know, particularly at the European Championship we saw during the summer, they're really focused on their strong defense. And with Lucy Marie Kretschmar in there is uh, a real steel merchant as well we can expect as we see here quite an aggressive defense from the german side but when you've got speed on the wings and through the center like Sentendre have there a uh, quick move can beat them yeah the defense needs to move quite a bit in order to uh defend against the fast tempo trying it again the same action as before and this time it didn't and successful yeah, that one coming off the post there from the Hungarians. And yeah, uh, Minga Turtles struggling a bit to find their range here in the opening couple of minutes. Uh, as we mentioned before, 
you know, it's difficult when you've had a whole day off to get back into it straight away. There's, you know, 20 minutes only in beach handball, two sets of 10 minutes, and then a potential shootout at the end of it. Uh, but you really cannot mess around. You have no time to waste. And that's maybe a difference between indoor and beach where you can settle into a game in indoor handball, take your time with the attacks, try and force a bit of a slower game in defense. But here in beach handball, it's completely relentless. Hey there. That's finally a breakthrough there and down the center and a nice in-flight goal, the first two points of the game to the Minga Turtles. There's four points down though and still being torn through down the left-hand side where there's plenty of joy for the Hungarian side, but finally off the board here. But uh, looking at it from a goalkeeper's perspective here, did uh, also very difficult to, uh, well, in comparison to indoor handball at least, there's a lot of disadvantages to being a goalkeeper, it feels. Yeah, in beach handball, but there are also a lot of the uh, like advantages in the sand. You can move. Uh, you can't move that quickly in the sand. You can't uh, yeah, defend the whole space of the goal, but uh, it doesn't hurt when you fall. So many of the goalkeepers actually jump really high and try to attack the player more than what they would do in indoor. But it's such a fast-paced game, so also the blocks, you have to see them right away in order to to save the ball. And with uh, Minga Turtles finally getting a bit more joy down the center, both of their two pointers so far scored by Paula, Paula Ripes in on the line. And she actually scored an incredible 26 points in the semifinal. She was by far and away their top scorer and seems to be the focus for them as we see a shot, a spin shot for the first time going in for the Turtles. Finding a bit more range now for them in the attack, but really Centendre completely relentless in their attack. And you can see they're being given a lot of space down the left-hand side, finally seeing a shot saved. Yeah. So that's the first time in a while we've seen them miss. Yeah, it was a great block too for the goalkeeper to go after. And she for goes hurt. For you personally, with uh, these shots down the, the wing, is there a particular uh, favorite position you have? Because we can see when it's four against three in uh, beach handball and attack all the time, you cannot mark every single player all of the time. So you have to be looking at players to maybe leave open or certain positions to shoot from that you're more comfortable with. Yeah. And usually I would prefer with my defense to open up in the side where we have the player who's running back and forth, both defense and uh, and attack, because at some point she's going to be tired. Mm. Okay, that's very so, interesting. Yeah. So yeah. regardless of how strong you may feel she is as a shooter, you're just happy to, to let her basically wear herself out. Yeah, exactly. At least that's what we try to, but sometimes you'll meet a player who has the completely upper hand on you and maybe um, I change the defense or my coach changes the defense uh, for me because we also need the saves and if I don't have the upper hand, of course we need to adapt and change some things because we can't just let her shoot. Yeah. I would see a penalty there fired into the top right hand corner so Minga Turtles up to 10 points now just four points down and with just under three and a half minutes or four and a half minutes left in the first set they're really coming into this one and a couple more saves here where they give away a penalty on this occasion but uh, a couple oh. more blocks and and all of a sudden the the game has turned so Santendre looking quite comfortable for the vast majority of this first set but uh, even though it's only 10 minutes it can feel quite long because these goals can be scored in very quick succession. Yeah, they can. But, I mean, that action, the defense should have stayed away and not made the penalty because the defense was pushed completely over to the side of the shooter. There was like a half uh, court on the other side. So they should have just like made her shoot. Oh. And it was a missed penalty by Fanny Freebush in the end, so a bit of a let-off 
for yeah. Ninja Turtles, but they, they couldn't take advantage of it. Down the on the red missing with their own specialist. So Santander is still up by four here and Keeper getting a touch to that, but it's a six yeah. point game. So Santander looking really confident, I think it's fair to say, in attack and really spreading out the attack, which is good to see. I mean, they, unlike the Turtles who have Paul, Paolo Ripes and uh, Amelie Mulman as their main scorers, they really spread it out in attack and there's a lot of different options for them. They've done yeah. it throughout the tournament and uh, it makes it a bit of a nightmare for the defense to deal with. Yeah. It is. Oh, uh, is it in? Yeah. I think that one just sneaked over. Yeah. And uh, into the final three minutes of this first set now. And Santendre still looking very confident and still getting a lot of space in the wings in particular. That's a good save, though, and a chance on the break yeah. for the Turtles. Look at how she, uh, she goes for the... She, um, trust the block that she gets in the shoot she goes just right away for the first post she knows that the block has the far post the second post so yeah it's a nice communication uh, between them and you know from from looking at it from afar it does look like there's plenty of space to shoot into but when you have a big defender on top of you all of a sudden that space disappears and you're forced to go to the near post yeah so we have a timeout here for Minga Turtles. There are six points down with just a couple of minutes left. Six points is really not, you know, not impossible to turn around here in the final couple of minutes of this set. What kind of approach do you think they have to take and what maybe what do they have to change? The defense seems to be getting better as the set goes on. Yeah, I, I, would, uh, I would focus on the defense because I think they're opening a bit uh, much up on the side, but being successful with it may, might like um, make them continue this approach. But at least when they push push the defense over to one side, don't make any penalty and like stay close and stay tight in the middle because we don't want the they don't want the specialists to shoot in the middle while the defense is like pushed together so much around her. We're just about back underway here. Another full start and uh, you can see high pressure from yeah. the Hungarian defense but a lot of space there on the left hand side for the specialist which is oh. really the last thing you want to do right yeah it is that was a free shot a free chance for her a good chance i would say too yeah she fools the block player and the goalkeeper too puts it in the second post and the same recipe again for Inga Turtles. So it's uh, two in quick succession for them and back within four points with 90 seconds now left in the first set. Yeah. Uh, for St. Andre, a case of, I guess, trying to control the tempo as much as they can. Going for the one pointer now, they feel that that's all they need at the moment to keep the German side at bay. Yeah. They put it away and. Uh, it's wise. Oh, and that's a good save as well. Oh. Yeah. Really good stuff. He's really great, the goalkeeper from uh, Hungary. Yeah, that's Agnes Kokai, number 92 for St. Andre. Doing very well. So they're very much in control here into the final minute and uh, another score or two. Well, he they get a penalty through. here. That was a very heavy contact on the way through. Yeah, Thankfully, I would say so. She's uh, Rebecca Kovac. Is up. She shouldn't be able to go through the defense that easily. The moments like that, how vocal are you with the defense? <laughs> you know that they know they're making that mistake, but do you still feel like you need to tell them? <laughs> of course I need to tell them, but usually they tell me like, okay, it's my mistake, so... Oh, that's another, I think... Uh, you got a touch to that? I think so. Wow. That's the second penalty miss, and... With just under 30 seconds left, there's so still an opportunity. There's a two pointer nice put nice away, goal. so it's not over yet. No. And a timeout okay, so taken. High pressure. Yeah. 
I'm and we're taken it. by Santandre, and uh, it's just a three-point game. I think on the scoreboard it said 22-18 for a while, but it didn't realize that uh, there was a one-pointer scored early on. So three points between the sides. And yeah, high pressure, I guess, is what's uh, needed here for the Ninga Turtles to try and... I guess they want them to take a shot. If a uh, turnover is not going to be possible, they're going to need to take a shot very quickly. Yeah, but some of them need to, one of the defense players at least, need to move down to take the pivot who is uh, coming in from the side. Um, but yeah, it's a bit late to take initiative though, but I, I like it. I like uh, when the teams do something different than just the normal approach of opening up to one side and making her run back and forth. But it, it's, it's really probably one of the toughest jobs I think at Beach Handball is playing in defense. I'm not a fan of it. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> it never <laughs> feels like, it never feels like there's, uh, you're covering enough of the space. What? I think it's so fun. Like if you have some kind of a, um, oh, nice going for the one pointer, but if you have a feeling of the, the, the arm and the, the ball in your arms, you know, like, uh, um, then you can make really good blocks and there is nothing better than making a good block. I was trying to be a decent player once, so it's, okay. it's kind of like a save. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the attacker in me. I much prefer scoring goals. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it feels, it feels like a thankless people. job, to be honest. But that, that is the, that's yeah. the first set won by Santandre, 22-20. In the end, a fairly close first set but as you said uh Ninga turtles taking maybe a bit too much time to take the initiative there in defense and leaving it a bit late yeah i think so it was a little bit late and they didn't really um uh, push the defense to the other side successfully or the goalkeeper wasn't fully having the upper hand on the right back there so there are some things that didn't in the defense that wasn't successful, I would say. They need to change something or they need to um, have more saves on the far end of the field, on the right side of the attack. And really focusing their attack very much on uh, Paola Rapes, uh, number 10, or number nine rather, with 10 points uh, of the 20 for Minga Turtles. Besides that, uh, just couple of two pointers for Elena Kringler, the number 17, and Jana Lotte Vox. So, and Mulman, who's a great player for them and uh, was part of that gold medal winning team this summer for Germany. Just two points for her so far. So, really, you can, you can say that Santendre are making uh, the German side focus on certain areas and playing into their hands a little bit. Yeah, they are. And they are with uh, Multicham Santendre then. They've spread it out a little bit more. They have uh, Fanny Fribesh on eight points so far, their top score, and then Rebecca Benze on six, and Sara Lerant with six as well. So yeah, they, they just looked a bit more comfortable in attack, it seemed, throughout that first set. Uh, really got off to a bright start, the Hungarian side, and they're already ready to go, it seems as well, not needing much of a, uh, a, a half time, the Germans. And I think that, that says a lot about the coaching as well. I think maybe a little bit of frustration there, saying, you know what you have to do here. Stop, like, uh, just get back into it. And I'm happy to jump yeah. back into the second set. Yeah, they probably already talked about this and know what to change or not change. Maybe they'll come out in the second half uh, not changing a thing, but being more successful in the tactics they're already put in the game. But I, I really want to see some more initiative. You have to do something to surprise the Hungarians. Yeah, when, when it's a situation like that and it doesn't seem like any particular player in the Santendre attack is uncomfortable in attack. They all look like they're, they're able to score when given an opportunity. What do you yeah. think you can do to surprise them? Well, usually my coach would uh, ask me about who I wanted uh, to shoot from. And then we would change the defense uh, in order to get that shooter to shoot. But 
um, it's difficult because I don't think the goalkeeper may have an upper hand on any of the Hungarian uh, shooters, so it's difficult. I think the it's it's about the whole defense doing, uh, being more aggressive, going more up, going more back, trying to take the attack foul, foul too. We haven't seen any attack fouls yet, so they need to be quicker in the sand, of course, but they also need to be more aggressive, provoke some mistakes from the Hung Hungarian. Yeah. Now, um, we should mention maybe one of the reasons why you're you're not an active beach handball player at the moment, and that's because you're a pro in in France uh, as of this summer. With uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm going to try and pronounce it, and then you can tell me how it's <laughs> properly said. Uh, Fleury Loré. Yeah, it's yeah. it's almost. I mean, almost. I have a difficult time uh, <laughs> pronouncing the names here, so. <laughs> If they don't correct me, that's just how I'm going to continue saying it. I would say for the Loire, but yeah, uh, Loire, because it's, yeah, 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 it is in the, well, you're in Orléans, right? That's the, the, oui. the home of it. We uh, are oui. oh, very good. Oui, oui, oui. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how's life in France uh, treating you so far? Uh, very well, I would say. We're not w winning so many games, so, but I, I feel good down here. People are very nice and want me to speak French, don't speak very much English, but I try with my childish kind of French <laughs> French, uh, French language. Um, I haven't had any French lessons uh, before, more than like 10 times uh, from the club. I haven't had it in school, so it's a little bit difficult to, ad to adapt, it, adapt into uh, the French. And how um, about the how about the rest of the squad then? Is is everything done through French? Yeah, it is. My coach speak, uh, speaks French to uh, to us, and then he will, he usually looks at me like, "Do you understand?" And then I'll be like, "No, I I don't understand. I've been here three months. I still don't understand. Maybe I I I kind of know." Some of the things he, he he's trying to say, um, because some of the words are similar to the English words, but but usually if he has like a big speech, then I'll be like maybe listening for for five minutes and then shutting off because <sighs> I I can't understand everything. So when he looks at me like that, I'll be like, no, Chris, I'm sorry, I I don't speak French yet. Je ne comprends pas. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Je ne comprends pas. Sorry. Okay. Uh, but that's well i guess uh you know from some perspectives they might just be like you know save the ball it's fine you just stand there in the goal and make the same yeah everything's fine exactly <laughs> exactly I, I mean it's an advantage for sure when you're in another country to be a goalkeeper you just have to save the balls and then it's, it's simple like that so well uh, as uh, as we're talking there, the start of the second set has happened. Still no score, uh, just over a minute of play, but that Oy. was an attacker foul given there. Attacker and, foul, uh, okay, I saw a penalty, but yeah. Yeah, uh, defender, I think, just got there in front. We saw a penalty as well um, a moment ago, which was saved. And I think uh, most of the penalties so far in this game have been saved or have gone wide, which I think is particularly interesting because that's one area I feel that there's an even bigger advantage for the attacker uh, yeah, in beach sure. than indoor is in the penalties. For sure, they should put the balls in the goal. 100%. If you don't score, it's the shooter's fault. Like, yeah. maybe it might be a great save, but it is a, like 80 to 20% of chances scoring. And. Oh. Are there any other particular reasons you would you would say that for for beach? I mean, one that springs to my mind is the positioning of the goalkeeper because oh, you nice really job. have to stay back on the line, right? You can't come out to four meters like in indoor because you'll just get lobbed. Um, I usually use my size in both beach, beach handball and indoor. I would still go uh, go more up or uh, uh, be more aggressive in it. And I have a theory that most of the, at least when they play against me, they put the, they shoot straight. So they shoot them the side where their arm is, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so usually it's, I mean, it's great to be a tall girl in beach handball. <laughs> but yeah, if you stay on the line, uh, you have a bit more time to, to react. 
We're seeing uh, a keeper here stepping out about one meter or so for this penalty. And this time it's put away. So at long last, yeah. we, we get a penalty scored. And at long last, we get some points in yeah. this second <laughs> set. Uh, almost three minutes played and just two points scored for oh, Santendre. And a bit of uh, bad luck there for the Ninga Turtles. I think that one bouncing off the, the sand and staying out. Yeah, good defense there and that's the defense we've been talking a bit yeah. about and that was lucy yeah. marie kretschmar finally getting her first steal of the game so although it's not happening for them in attack a bit of confidence built here in uh, what seems to be a bit more of a nervy second set yeah and we also saw some attack files i was speaking about in the half time it's nice to see taking a more initiative Oh, that's a great lob over the head of the keeper. And now it's starting to open up a bit. But do you feel like it in these metal metal games that things get a bit more uh, realistic or the the fact that it's up for a medal is dawning on them a bit in the second set? They, they know each other a little bit better and maybe cancelling each other out a bit more. I can see we also got uh, some questions on Twitch. Uh, Jay Racer asks, how much contact is allowed compared to a normal handball? Zero. Um, <laughs> yeah, zero. <laughs> almost zero. I mean, like, you can, your body can stand in the sand and maybe you can move a bit. Of course, you can move a bit to the side, but you can't do a tackle mm. uh, or make a tackle. So, in general, to make it simple, you can use your body, but you can't use your your hands or your arm. Yeah, that's a that's a good good question there. And also, uh, Jordanek asking for a recap of the rules in general. Uh, we can try and quickly do that at least when it comes to the scoring, uh, which I think is important for this game now. So, in beach handball, we have two sets of ten minutes each, and the score after each set. Uh, Basically, what we saw the first set, the score was 22-20. So that was the set one for Centendre. Then we go back to 0-0 for the second set. And then we go again for 10 minutes. If Centendre win this set as well, then they win the match two sets to nil. If Minga Turtles win this set, regardless of how many points you win it by, they can win this one by 15. It won't matter. It'll be 1-1. And then we go to a shootout, which is a whole other barrel of fun. And maybe we can yeah. talk a bit more about that uh, if and when it happens during the game or the day, rather. Uh, it could even happen in this one as the second set is quite even. It's 6-6 six, six at the moment. Yeah. So, yeah, we go back to 0-0. Zero, zero, and it's, it's a very different dynamic because you can lose one set by 15, 20 points. Doesn't matter. You can win the second by one and then it's a draw. Yeah. And usually... Uh... You see often that the the games go into a shootout because there's also something, there's a mental kind of a game going on. If you win one set and when you don't continue to use the scoreboard from the first set, then you start over again, as you said, in the second half. And it's a mental kind of um, challenge uh, to win again from zero. So many, many games end in shootout. It's very normal. And it's also, for some, maybe the, the best part of the game to see the shootout. Even for you as a goalkeeper? I would say it might be a surprise to you, but I actually kind of love the shootout. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's so fun trying uh, new things and being more aggressive. I like to go out on the uh, out of the goalkeeper field and maybe I'm not great at taking the attack foul, but I am great at making a block since I have a feel of the ball in my my arms and my hands. Mm. So I like to do something different and go out and maybe take the pass or steal the pass from from the goalkeeper to the, the shooter. So I actually kind of uh, like the sh shootout. It's fun. It's just you against the, the player. That's a very interesting aspect for you as a goalkeeper who likes to come out and block, because I don't think we see that enough in beach handball. Often, you know, no. as an attacker, 
that they're going to come out and block because they send a defender in as the goalkeeper. Uh, and when there's a goalkeeper in there, you almost know that they're always going to stay back and, and wait for you to uh, take yeah. a normal shot. And this may make yeah. absolutely no sense to people who haven't seen a shootout before, but you'll understand when you see it at some point uh, later yeah. today. So we can talk a little bit more about that if yeah. when we see it. But uh, in the meantime, with uh, just over two and a half minutes left in this second set, uh, the Minga Turtles have taken the lead. And as you said there, yeah, it's all about that mental reset because uh, yeah. from my experience in Beach Amble, it's always when you win the first set, it's just reminding everyone, look, guys, we have to, we cannot go to a shootout here. We have to win the exactly. second set. And you know, yeah. as a team that's lost the first set, it's like, okay, it doesn't matter. We can win this second and we go to a shootout. Exactly. And uh, it might be a little more... Uh easy mentally for the for the losing team in the first set that it for sure is uh, difficult for both of the teams to start over again and start from from scratch or from zero yeah and with Santendre who um we see have just gone four points oh. down now they're having a, a similar situation to what happened to them in the semi-final yesterday so in that one against uh team Al uh, Maria they won the first set 25-24 and then really got hammered in the second set, losing that one by eight points before losing in the shootout. So it goes or backs up exactly what you were saying there. And they find mm -hmm. themselves in a somewhat similar situation here as the Minga Turtles have a chance to go up by six. Opening oh, no, was unfortunate. up to the right side of the attack or the left side of the defense, I see. They have a right-handed right back or right wing. Mm. Which is a is a different play than if you're having if you have a left-handed right wing. And tell us a little bit about why a team might do that. Besides the fact that not every team has a lot of left-handers, but it also makes it a bit trickier no. for a defender, right? Yeah, it is more difficult to block on a right-handed player. Sometimes here you see it perfectly um, done very well by the the blocker but it, it can be difficult because there's also some aspect in it many attacking players would will jump into the blocking player so many of the times the the, the closest defense player can't make the block they can maybe steal the steal the space um and make the shooter go far out to the side, but they can't always make the block. So that's the center defense player who does that. Because if you touch the player in the, while shooting, then there's a penalty. And most of the right-handed players are able to jump into the block player. Yeah, yeah. It is a, it's kind of a cheeky, maybe cheeky thing to do, but it happens. Yeah, and it can work very well when it works out. And uh, we just saw a missed shot there by Centendre, as that was a chance for them to draw level here just before the end of the second set. But it went wide to the left. So Minga Turtles now up by two points. They've taken a time out here with, I think, there's 15 seconds left in the second set. So what do you think Coach Sander is uh, taking them through here, just trying to create an opportunity to score one pointer that should win the second set for them? Yeah, I would go for the one pointer for sure. Um, that's a safe, safe, uh, a safe uh, tactic to go with. Um, let's see what the the defense does. The Hungarian defense and tempo defense does. Very because aggressive. they need to take some, in, yeah, very aggressive, starting off totally in the face of the the, the German players. The 15 seconds left here in the second set. As you said, an aggressive defense. And, oh, that's a nice bit of play, though. One pointer oh. needed. They get the one pointer. And yeah. that is going to send this one into a shootout, regardless of what happens here in the last few seconds. One last shot, Amazing. perhaps, or penalty earned for Centendre, but it doesn't matter at this no. stage. And yeah, we're going to a shootout. So for those of you who uh, haven't seen much beach handball or any beach handball, uh, you're in for a treat that is very different to anything else you'll see. Uh, it's not like your indoor handball penalty shootout where it's just penalties as we're seeing at the moment from uh, seven meters out. 
it's uh, full court fast breaks. We'll see how this last yeah. penalty goes. And it's saved. So 15 12. Oh, okay. 15, Maybe it doesn't there. mean anything, but it, yeah. it's a good Still. thing. Uh, it's a good thing for the goalkeeper to start or end with uh, before the shootout to have a boost of confidence. So we're going into the shootout now in a moment. Go back to 0 0 again. So it's one set apiece. The winner takes all here in the bronze medal game of the Women's Beach Handball Champions Cup. Five penalties each. You have an attacker, you have a goalkeeper with them, and you have a goalkeeper down the other end. You pass the ball to your own goalkeeper, you run down the court, receive the ball, and then take your steps and most of the time spin shoot. You can also catch the ball in the air and have a full court in flight, which I've seen has happened this week. Very unusual though. But the point is, yeah. just like in the normal game, to score two points and down the other end, you have the goalkeeper trying to either save it or, as we were talking about earlier, come out of their six meter area and try to intercept the ball or uh, block the shot from very close up. So a lot of variance here in the penalty shootouts and beach handball. A lot of different things can happen and it makes it very exciting. Yeah. And concerning the shootout, we have a question from Paco Flo. Uh, do you, how do you handle the pressure in the shootout? Um, thank you for the question. Um, well, as an athlete, I kind of thrive on the pressure, but of course, uh, I may, uh, the, the, the shooters may have the upper hand on me uh, throughout the first set and the second set, but this time, uh, in the shootout, it's it's uh, from scratch. It's from uh, from zero again. So um, the pressure is, I love it. I mean, it's the pressure. I don't feel as much, maybe, but I feel the excitement because now it's like, Ooh, it's it's me against the shooter. Ooh, let's let's do it. I'm like, I can't wait to to uh, try and save the ball. So I feel the excitement more than I feel the pressure. Oh, nice go. Yeah, it takes so the pressure very much on the on the attackers really in these in these situations also because a lot can go wrong uh, when mm -hmm. you're running up the court. You're waiting to receive a pass, and uh, yeah, that was a nice finish by Fanny Freibesch. The Germans now looking to respond, and the goalkeeper gets a touch to it, but it goes Yay. in anyway. Oh. Um, that was. Uh, you see how much the goalkeeper stays in the goal. She. Mm -hmm. Try, she's trying to give herself a little more time to react, but we haven't seen any initiative coming from the, the goalkeepers yet, but that's kind of normal in the shootout, that they wait to take initiative or do something different until maybe the, the third round or the, the, the fourth or the fifth round. The Dorothea Gaidos next up for Saint Andre. Goalkeeper takes time this time. The keeper comes out looking for the block and oh, just evades her. That was a good attempt. Yeah, but it was. In situations like that, and that was Lucy Marie Kretschmar who came out to try and get the block on that one. Um, what, what do you think the tactics are for a blocker to come out like that? What, do you, what is the perfect situation for you as the goalkeeper when you're trying to come out? Um, the perfect situation, if it's the right-handed player, I would push them to the side so I can block the arm. Um, so in the left side, their left side, I would, I would push uh, the right-handed player so I am closer to the arm while I'm blocking. But if the player is really fast, then she would just like be able to run past me and then there's the free goal. But um, because I'm, I'm, I'm quite sizable, I'm quite tall, so I'm not that fast in the sand. So if you can outrun me, then you have a pretty good advantage of scoring. But yeah, get the right handed to the left side like this. There you like go. This. There I'm you crazy. go. And that was an interesting one. It's a great block down as well. Pretty much exactly as you explained, it should be done. But on both that occasion and the last shot, we had a right-hander coming down the right-hand side as well, which I feel made life a lot more difficult for her uh, when she was yeah. coming across the goalkeeper. 
Yeah. I if I was a shooter, I would run to the other side as a right hand mm. right handed player. Oh that that's a nice Obviously, one. Four and out. Just just underneath oh. the crossbar there. And yeah, but look how, how much she's like pushed out. She she doesn't want to run into the center of the the, the court. She stays out into the right side. I, it's kind of interesting, I think. <gasps> Could be the pressure. But the Minga Turtles now yeah. up six points to four. And this is a, a must score penalty for Rebecca Benze. She's in the center. Keeper Ooh, comes out. Hesitating. Oh, that's a oh. nice finish. <laughs> wow, well, that a was nice goal. <laughs> really well dealt with under pressure there. Serious pressure yeah. from the defending goalkeeper, but just sneak that one in under the crossbar. And yeah. Santendre level again, but they have taken one penalty more. So the advantage very much for the Germans. And it's Jana Eppla next up. She's uh, doing the traditional way, right handed from the left hand side. Yeah. But again, trying to. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Oh, nice goal. Look how she spins and are still able to put the shot in the top end of the goal. It's, that's, that's pretty good. And we'll talk a little bit about that as well, the goalkeeper's perspective from the, the spin shooting. But we'll, we'll take a look at this penalty first because it is, again, a must score for St. Andre. Yeah. If it's a miss here, uh, then the penalty the shootout is one. Oh, yeah. nicely done. Oh, yeah. And, like she's so uh, close. You can see it on the, the yeah. goalkeeper. She's like, oh, damn. <laughs> Why didn't I jump more? Good effort, but uh, well done again. They've done their bit now, St. Andre. They've scored eight points from their five shots. A one pointer here will win it for Minga Turtles. And it's Jana Lotte Voch from the left hand side. All she needs is one. Keeper comes out and it's bounced in. And the bronze medal yeah. goes to Minga Turtles. There you go. Congratulations. And what a summer it's been for a bunch of these players, some of them part of the German national team, which won the beach handball Euro just a couple of months ago in Bulgaria. No gold this time around, but a bronze medal, still a fantastic achievement in what is a collection of the best club teams in Europe. Yeah, it's something to brag about. I would brag about it, hopefully, <laughs> for me being the entire year, probably. That was a good, uh, really good comeback from the uh, German side, Ninga Turtles, because as we were mentioning at the time, it was a slow start to the game for them in the first yeah. set. They, and also in the second set, to be fair, but uh, in the first set in particular, going down heavily, they came into it eventually, but uh, it goes back to that, the mental aspect you were talking about, coming from one set down and forcing it to the shootout. Yeah, because in the shootout, everything can happen. I mean, everything can happen because it, it's not the same as the, the the first two sets of the game. Of course, it's like a free shot, a free penalty, or a free uh, fast break. So it's it's like a total, um, completely different aspect of the of the game of beach handball. It's like you have beach handball and then you have shootout in beach handball. Yeah. So everything can happen. It's uh, anything is possible. I really like that. And particularly interesting as we spoke about with the the blocker and in that case it was lucy Mary kretschmar a defender who was in goal i think for four of the five shots she blocked down one of them and uh, really taking the initiative like you talked about and it paid off in the end for them yeah totally because you have one chance you have uh you shoot out so you have to take advantage of it like because many of these shooters have probably been doing this uh, free chance shootout uh, a million times. Like they can do it in their sleep. If you wake them up in the middle of the night, they'll probably be like, "Oh yeah, spin and a shot." So uh, you have to aggravate some, provoke some some mistakes. Some yeah, I, I think that's what it's all about. What is uh, the focus? 
and it paid off for them in the end. So congratulations to the Minga Turtles from Germany getting the bronze medal. That's our first medal of the day decided. And we've got plenty more to give out over the next few hours. Uh, a reminder, seeing as we're on the women's side at the moment, at 3.30 Central European time, we have the women's final between GRD Lisa from Portugal against Team Almeria from Spain. And coming up next, though, we have the men's bronze medal match.